Ripple is poised to reveal its IPO and celebrate its legal victory over the SEC with a big event in New York on the aforementioned date. But hold on to your seats, because there's more to this story than what CTO David Short has been stirring up. You heard it here. First Ripple is poised to reveal its IPO and celebrate its legal victory over the SEC with a big event. People, the hype is genuine. According to a credible prognosis, the value of XRP might soar to an astounding 150. This prediction is supported by recent statements made by Ripple's chief development officer. Mark the 29th of September 2023 on your calendars because that's when Ripple plans to announce their eagerly anticipated IPO after settling with the SEC. Market analysts and insiders believe that this will mark the beginning of a significant price search. Here's where it gets even more interesting. This aligns perfectly with the narrative that has been developing, pointing towards a significant announcement that is bound to shake things up on that day. It's not just idle chatter either. We have confirmation from the SEC and various legal experts. In this video, we're digging deep and bringing you an analytical breakdown of all the possible scenarios. Enjoying my content? Give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments section below. We're constantly examining different legal documents, all of which strongly suggest a settlement is imminent. Interestingly, a confidential meeting is scheduled for an official SCC assembly on the 14th of September. 2023. This meeting is anticipated to cover four key issues. All the beginning and ending of injunctive actions were tightly interwoven. The creation and resolution of administrative proceedings for resolving legal claims and other issues important to the inspection and enforcement procedures. The strangest feature of this conference is its secrecy, which raises the possibility that the SCC wants to keep the public in the dark about the conversations. A step that strongly suggests could very likely be the main topic of discussion during the settlement negotiations. I must admit that I have high hopes. Even Johnny Detton, a well-known attorney heavily involved in the Ripple Sec case who is presently defending over 75,000 XRP investors, has expressed the likelihood that the Sec will settle with Ripple. At this point, you might be wondering why Johnny Detton would say such a thing. A crypto nerd, what precisely are you alluding to? I know it seems a little unclear, especially because the SEC has formally started the process to perhaps reclassify XRP as a security. But let's clear up some misconceptions first. Contrary to common assumption, the SEC isn't eager to pursue an appeal or to contest the Ripple SEC grievance further. Using Ripple as an example, they haven't met the requirements to move forward in that way. What we're seeing here is the result of careful research and analysis. Given that Ripple's position is not solid at the moment and that a recent ruling classifies XRP as a cryptocurrency rather than a security seems to have dealt them a significant blow. The current narrative seems to be leaning towards the SEC pressuring Ripple into a settlement. They have invested significant resources into this battle, and now it seems like they are cornered with faults found on all sides. A settlement now would be a strategic maneuver for them and a chance. They claim that if they are unable to reach an agreement with Ripple, they will resort to appealing the case. This course of action makes sense for Ripple because, as many of you may know, the ruling determined that XRP was not a security that was accessible to the average investor. However, when Ripple started selling XRP to banks and other financial institutions, it was classified as a security. This has led to two different viewpoints on the Cirque coin. The anticipation is growing for an impending settlement. Possibly in the days before the 29th of September. CERC is not a security, even in the eyes of institutional investors. However, this could mean that Ripple might have to make some concessions potentially. Ripple sees a clear pathway here where a favorable settlement could materialize if the SEC grants clarity by designating XRP as a non-security for both retail and institutional investors. These events could have a domino effect that could raise the value of XRP to previously unheard of heights, possibly between $50 and $150. I've decided to wager everything on this, vowing 1.50 per XRP. Target by September. If not, I'll permanently close my account. Yes, you heard correctly, and feel free to take a screenshot of this time. If the claims are accurate, it corresponds well with the information we have from Ripple CTO. Taking into account the hints we have of the upcoming IPO, reaching a value within this range appears not only likely but also logically sound. As another twist in this ongoing tale occurs, I must admit that I'm buzzing with enthusiasm because my belief in XRP is stronger than ever. You can hear it in my tone. Sarah Netburn, judge of a key milestone in this case, 
occurred on the 18th of July, 2023, when she decided that XRP by its nature is not a security since the landmark ruling, which previously emphasized the need for Ripple and the SEC to decide on a settlement conference date. Ripple has successfully positioned itself in a favorable position, showing a remarkable trend of reallocating 80% of the monthly escrow release while only holding 20% of the share. When you look closer, it appears plausible that a consensus was reached where Ripple agreed to specific terms, likely including a restriction on retaining only 20% of their escrow output with the remaining 80% being deemed non-utilizable. This strategy appears highly calculated indicative of an agreed resolution at the Ripple Sex Settlement Conference. Unless seen as a condition stated during discussions, this decision to reverse a sizable chunk of the escrow seems counterpoint. An agreement between Ripple and the SEC to reinstate a sizable 800 million XRP back into the escrow, while forbidding any transactions with them would seem to be a logical conjecture. If supply materializes, it would be encouraging for XRP holders and suggest a bright financial future. This scenario is compared to a big burn that would inevitably result in a rise in demand and a consequent increase in the value of XRP. Numerous facts and signs support the idea that a price point of $150 might be a realistic estimate. Even an experienced Wells Fargo analyst presents a bullish projection, believing that XRP might rise to a value range between $1.100 to $1.500 in the upcoming 4 to 7 months and positing a $1.150 price target. Although the market price of XRP is still stuck at 50 cents, the benchmark appears to be perfectly appropriate. Its intrinsic value far exceeds this amount, which is why I constantly urge everyone I interact with, including my esteemed viewers, to look past the current market dynamics and concentrate on the underlying potential value held within this council. This is especially true for Zerb, a cryptocurrency that is poised to transform cross-border financial transactions by channeling transactions worth billions of dollars. Sometimes we need concrete reminders of this potential trajectory, which is why I've decided to invest in a physical representation of this digital asset, a metallic cryptocurrency coin adorned with the XRP emblem, which coins are available in a sleek case. This development is bound to spur an upward trend in demand, coupled with a decreasing supply, potentially catapulting the price to staggering heights, spanning three, four, or even five digits per unit. Other than XRP, which has a wide range of other notable cryptocurrencies. For me, these coins act as daily reminders, adorning my desk and riding in the backseat of my car with me while silently promising the possible rise in XRP worth. Guys, let this serve as a tantalizing hint to the exciting future where it potentially breaks the $1.000 mark since this sentiment fuels my love for my collection of XRP coins. Mark, keep in mind that I'm not a licensed financial advisor in the big picture. I always advise viewers to perform their research and consult with professionals before making any financial choices as the information offered in these films is solely for entertainment reasons. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the alerts so you can be the first to know when I post new stuff.